Well, this is my next project. <clears throat> and as you can probably see, this is not going to be a workshop project or a model steam engine project. And uh, you guys that watch my channel for those videos, you may want to give this one and subsequent ones I do on this a skip. This is a BBC microcomputer Model B. Now, for those of you who live outside of the UK, you may not be familiar with the BBC Micro. I'm sure the uh, vintage computer bus will be, but everybody else, I doubt they will. This is an extremely popular microcomputer in the early 80s in the UK. Part of the reason for that was that about 80% of UK schools adopted this as the first microcomputer that they had in the schools. So basically, this thing was made by uh, Acorn Computers. But it was done in conjunction with something that was known as the BBC Computer Literacy Project, which was to promote basic computing. Now, this was released in 1981, but most of us didn't get them until about 1982 because there was supply problems, etc. So this is a very, very old machine. So why have I got one? <laughs> well, the BBC Micro Model B was the very first computer that I ever owned way back in the early 80s and obviously I used it for very important stuff namely playing games and the game that I spent hours and hours playing with my friend Joe was Elite. Now that's available for a whole load of other systems now but at the time it was only as far as I can remember out for the BBC and we spent hours and hours playing that so I've been thinking about getting one for a while and I've been looking at the prices and then they, they, these things are not exactly cheap if you want to get a working one you know they can go for several hundred pounds but this one is not working so I thought it would make a great project to actually restore it and get it going. I will read to you what the seller of this item put in his description. Vintage BBC microcomputer as you see in the picture I tested this item and basically nearly ended up setting the shed on fire. It smoked from the back like a trooper. <laughs> well, unfortunately, um, if you know anything at all about these machines, if you come across an old BBC Micro, the very first thing you do not do is power it up. The power supplies used <coughs> a variety of capacitors, but particularly there are a couple of reefer caps in there and they always, always go. So the first thing you do when you've got one of these, take it apart, take the power supply out, strip it down and recap it. And then you should be good to go after that. Of course, there may well be other problems. Uh, I've not opened this up. This is literally arrived today and I've just unpacked it. <clears throat> so that's the first thing we'll do. Well, I'm going to give it a damn good clean because it's pretty grubby. But it came with some interesting extras. It came with these um, most peculiar... <laughs> <laughs> these, these are BBC Micro joysticks and they are weird, right? <laughs> but they are the official ones. So, you know, that was that's nice to have. Um, this little box over here, let's move the camera over to this side. There we go. Now that is an official BBC Micro light pen. I've never even seen one of those. So that's, that's interesting. A couple of leads, it's got the cassette lead, which allows you to connect the thing up to a tape cassette player and load and save programs. It's got a RGB video output lead and it's got a couple of, it's got the user guide and the welcome guide that came with it. So yes, I'm looking forward to digging into this and seeing what the state of it is inside. So we've got the top off. There's only four screws that hold the case together and the case cleaned up very well. Actually, it was mainly just dust. There is a bit of grime still on there. I can work on that with some other cleaning surfaces, but I'm actually quite impressed with the condition of this. I mean, you know, <laughs> it looks very clean. Bear in mind, this is a getting on for 40 year old computer. And there wasn't a lot of dust and dirt inside the computer. That in fact, the keyboard is going to be fine with just a blowout with compressed air, I think. I've had a look at the date codes on as many of the chips as I can read, and they're pretty much all 1983. So we can then place this at, uh, uh, as a 1983 manufacturer. And it's an issue four board, which is probably about right, because that was one of the early issues. I think they went up to seven. So the next job is to remove this bad boy here and find out just exactly what's blown up inside there. So the power supply's out. I'll remove the keyboard too, because it just makes it easier to get the power supply out. And uh, sure enough, <coughs> 
I don't know how you were, you, this is going to show up on the camera, but um, let's see if we can get some. There is a big reefer cap right there, 0.1 microfarad, and that is literally cracked in half. And this is what uh, quite often happens with these things. There's a smaller reefer under here, which initially looks okay, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to recap the whole thing anyway before we even attempt to put any power on it. So that will be the next stage is stripping that down. Um, I'm also going to pull the motherboard out because some of the supports I think have cracked off underneath because put certain areas of it are loose. And also I want to give it a good going over using the uh, bench magnifier and clean up any corrosion or any rubbish that's on there. So that will be what we do next. Well, the case cleaned up really nicely. These early BBC Micros, they had a textured finish to the plastic cases. And it's really nice, but it does pick up the dirt and you get a lot of grime embedded, particularly around the keyboard. However, with a small bit of soft scotch bright and some household cleaner, I've managed to get all of the grimy dirt out and the case is cleaned up really well. So here inside the case, I was very lucky. Just zoom in on that a bit so you can see it. Only one of the motherboard supports was actually broken and I was able to glue that back in using some super glue and then I've basically reinforced it with chemical metal and that should hold up absolutely fine. So we're really done with the case. Um, what's next? Okay, the next thing will be the motherboard. Now I've been all over the motherboard with the bench magnifier and it is in very good condition. I'm very pleased. Also on the underside, I've flipped it over and had a look and I can't see any joints that even look remotely suspect. So fingers crossed, hopefully if everything on the motherboard is okay. It was a bit dusty in places. I've cleaned that up with isopropyl alcohol. And also this thing that's sticking up at the back, that's the connection to the composite video output, which goes out of the back of the case on a BNC connector. The problem is, the BNC connector is one of these panel mount ones which goes in from the outside and then there's a nut that holds it on. And the problem with that is every time you want to take the motherboard out, you've got to unsolder the wires from the connector to get the board out. So I've added a JST connector, which and obviously the mating half is on the socket, so that I don't have to do that when I want to take the board out. Hopefully we won't have to take the board out again, but you never can tell. Um, you probably notice there's a whole load of empty sockets for chips over here. That's not a problem. All of those empty sockets, apart from these two, that one and all of those are to do with the disk interface. And uh, that's uh, you don't need that in there to actually get the computer to run and it to boot. So we will probably not worry too much about that because there are modern SD card interface solutions for the BBC Micro, which allow you to load and save programs much easily. And most of those connect through the user port. So we don't really need those anyway. So that's about it for now. The next thing is to attack the power supply.